Elder Page, having arrived, was called upon, and addressed the congregation in relation to the non-performance of his mission to Jerusalem. He said that when he started with Elder Hyde, joy filled their hearts, and they were aware of the responsibility of their mission. Elder Hyde's vision was that he should be in Jerusalem alone. E. P. considered Elder Hyde to be his father and guide in the mission, and felt it his duty to submit to Elder Hyde's opinion in all things. No elders ever were more in concert on a mission than they were while together. They made a covenant in Quincy to stand by each other while on the mission, that if they were insulted or imposed upon they would stand by each other even unto death, and not separate unless to go a few miles to preach a sermon, that all monies should go into one purse, and it did so. Elder Hyde in Indiana first said that he would go to visit Brother Knight, and that Elder Page should stay and preach. He assented, and he went and returned to Indianapolis. Elder Page had a mare given to him on account of both. Elder Hyde then took the mare, went on, and left his luggage with Elder Page. While away, he sold the mare for forty dollars, and received sixty dollars more as a donation from a man to whom he sold the mare. He returned, then preached in Dayton, and received a handsome contribution. Elder Page preached sixteen miles off, and raised a branch. Elder Hyde went to Cincinnati, revised the Missouri persecutions, got two thousand copies printed, and paid for them, and took part of them with him, and left a large box full of about a hundred and fifty loose copies with Elder Page. Elder Hyde started for Philadelphia, proposing to visit churches on the way. He left Elder Page twenty-three dollars and thirty-one cents. Elder Page returned to Dayton, and Milton, and sold books, with the intention of following Elder Hyde as soon as practicable. But he stayed a day or two too long, and the river closed by the frost, from one to two weeks earlier than usual. Elder Hyde told him that it was possible that they might be from one to two years before they would leave America, as it would take upwards of a thousand dollars each to take them to Jerusalem and back, that it would be slow gleaning in England, and assigned this as a reason for not immediately following Elder Hyde, thinking that he would be sure of seeing him in the spring. Elder Page accused himself of not using better economy in proceeding on his journey, came out a piece in the paper stating the displeasure of the Lord respecting Elder Hyde and Elder Page. He sat down and wrote a piece to put in the paper acknowledging the justice of the charge, but wisdom prevented its being published, preached about Washington, etc., gathered funds for the mission in Westchester and in Philadelphia. Elder Hyde raised funds on behalf of the mission by applauding Elder Page's talents, wisdom, etc., but they were disappointed in him when they saw him. He raised funds for the mission. The most liberal was in Philadelphia. He intended to sail on the 25th of July, but the brethren said that if he would remain two weeks, they would raise funds for him. They found that it would take longer, and he decided to stay a month. He then received a command through a letter from President H. Smith to an official character in Philadelphia, requesting him to return. He wrote to ascertain the reason, but did not get an answer. He was then called in by President J. Smith and Elder B. Young. Elder Hyde would often renew the covenant between them to never part with each other in that mission. Elder Page had no blame to attach to Elder Hyde. He supposed that he had done right, but if he had been in his place, he would have tarried for him until the spring. The reports of his having apostatized, etc., returned even from this place to New York. Many reproved him for leaving Cincinnati for Dayton. President J. Smith then arose and stated that it was wrong to make the covenant referred to by him, that it created a lack of confidence for two men to covenant, to reveal all acts of secrecy or otherwise to each other, and Elder Page showed a little grannyism. He said that no two men, when they agreed to go together, ought to separate, that the prophets of old would not, and quoted the circumstances of Elijah and Elisha, third Kings, third, second chapter, when about to go to Gilgal also went about to go to Jericho and to Jordan, that Elisha could not get clear of Elijah, that he clung to his garment until he was taken to heaven, and that Elder Page should have stuck by Elder Hyde, and he might have gone to Jerusalem, that there is nothing very bad in it but by experience let us profit. Again the Lord made use of Elder Page as a scapegoat to procure funds for Elder Hyde. When Elder Hyde returns, we will reconsider the matter, and perhaps send them back to Jerusalem. We will fellowship Elder Page until Elder Hyde comes, and we will then weld them together and make them one. A vote was then put, and carried that we hold Elder Page in full fellowship.